for you through every phase of your life, even making the transfer of your wealth and assets totally seamless. And when you're ready to explore life after work, ARM doesn't just show you the way, we are right there with you. And if you're looking for an investment that doesn't just change your life, but touches the lives of many, Then, join us in building the community of the future. Come, let's face tomorrow together. ARM, invested in your tomorrow. All right. Good day, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to today's um, session. I hope we are having a good, a good day at work. Um, it's going to be an enlightening session, so we'd like to welcome you. So um, today we'll be delving into how you can have a retirement of your dreams. And there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to be talking about today. So we want you to be um, attentive and also to be, uh, to be ready to learn a lot because we've also put together our team who is going to um, ensure that, uh, I mean, take, you, take us through that journey for us to ensure that we have a valuable time, I like the time here. So just going through what we'll be going through today. Uh, number one is that we're going to take you through um, life after retirement, how you can plan for retirement. Then the time that you're also going to be retired, how you also need to apply the information that you have to know the things that you are entitled to at that time of retirement. So please, it's going to be a wonderful one. We've also invited a special guest um, from AXA Mansad, who will also be talking to us about health and well-being at the time of retirement. So please, uh, as at this time, every one of us are muted. And that's also to ensure that we have some level of decorum during this session. If you have any question or, or um, comments to make, you can make use of the chat area. If you have specific questions, you can um, also do that by putting your questions in the Q&A area or raise your hand. Uh, maybe during the time for question and answer, you can raise your hand and would also uh, enable you to speak at that time. So. Um, I'd like to welcome you again. Um, our team that will be taking us through, ses through this session, um, uh, um, I have my other colleagues as well as um, the guests, um, the invited guests that I've also mentioned um, earlier. Um, and with time, you also get to meet him. Um, that's from Axel Mansad, who is also um, going to be having or adding some value to this presentation. So without wasting much time, I welcome you once again, but to also welcome us officially to this session, I'll be inviting our head of customer experience in ARM pensions, um, in the person of um, Lola Adekweju Shangutadi, who is going to give us an opening remarks to kick off the, um, the proceedings for today's um, session. Um, Lola. Thank you, Larry. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I just want to thank each one of you um, for being with us today. We're very pleased that you're able to join us. I um, want to thank all of our existing customers who have been with us for a very long time. And also just use this opportunity to say thank you to everybody who has also transferred um, the RACs to ARM in the last couple of years. Um, today, we have a lot we'd like to share with you. We know a good number of you are already preparing for retirement, and there are certain important um, information that we want to pass across so that as you begin that journey, um, you know what lies ahead. You know what and what you need to put together in terms of your documentations, what are the options that are also available to you. So we have a, lot, a whole lot we would like to share with you. Um, we would ask that you please um, pay attention, listen, we would also be sharing all of the materials with you um, at the end of the session. So don't worry, we would also get the, the PowerPoints that we're going to be presenting today. We would also ask that if you have questions, please drop it in the Q&A um, as we proceed. And 
we have our team at the back end who would also just be answering your questions and we'll also ensure that we take a good number of them as much as possible during the session. So please um, stay back, sit and enjoy. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Lola, for that um, beautiful opening remarks. And just like you have reiterated, um, this is going to be an enlightening session. So we want you to just um, take advantage of the great information that we'll be, um, we'll be sharing here. Many of us, um, perhaps this is probably the first time you are also going to be hearing some things. And um, as we approach a retirement is necessary for us in AI and pensions, we believe that it is not even at a time that you are retiring that you're getting to know some things. So this is a preparatory journey um, to let you know how you can start planning for that time, whether you are retiring in the next six months or in the next um, in the next five years. So, but we've tried to also um, ensure that this is for people who are very close to retirement. And even if you still have five years or 10 years to retirement, this is also good for you to know the things that you are um, going to be um, um, entitled to or how you need to prepare for that time. Um, even getting to have all of that information right from now. So it's good to have everyone. And we'll just, before we go into the technical session and start taking the presentations, I would just like us to take a short poll um, right now. Um, and this is just to um, let us know. So we're asking you, what is your retirement? Uh, what is your preferred retirement lifestyle? So I want you to look to your screen right now. You see a poll that is running on your screen right now. Pick your desired uh, option. So the option says home hobbies. That is, you want to live around the home. Maybe you're like a gardener. You want to ensure that maybe that's the time to start that garden that you've been dreaming of. Or you want to be a tourist. You want to be like some people will say, just globetrotting. You want to travel from one place to the other. You've not had time to do that. So you will just want to you know have a tour of the world and explore um as it were or do you are you somebody that like community service want to volunteer maybe that's the time to go teach somewhere or you know um maybe you're a doctor you want to use that time to volunteer your service in a local hospital or you're an entrepreneur you want to start your own business uh you want to start your second career and you just want to consult um so i can see Many of us have already done that. Um, we still want many of you to um, to 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 choose your your preferred option. Uh, from what I can see on the screen right now, those that want to start business or they want to start a business that is they want to be entrepreneur at the time of retirement, they are leading the pack, followed by the consultants, followed by okay, is a very strict. Um, between a tourist and starting a second career is almost almost the same. But many of us really do want to own our own businesses at the time of retirement, and these are valid uh, these are valid desires. And um, we are also here to help you um, achieve that retirement. So this is going to close now in the next um, five seconds. All right. So if you have not done that, you still have one or two seconds to do that. Okay, so we're going to end the poll right now. All right, the poll has ended and uh, maybe just to share the results with us. And uh, we see that those of us who want to retire and be entrepreneur, we lead the pack. And, um, and I think this is not far from reality. Um, and also based on experience that we've seen, many people want to start their business at the time of retirement. Um, even being a consultant is also, um, you know, trying to get extra income at the time of retirement. So thank you so much for participating in this. Um, so right now we'll just move to the um, technical session. And the first topic we'll be taking today um, is just to tell us how you can um, start planning for retirement, even right from now. Um, you know, when we say planning, Many of us think that, um, okay, it is maybe like one week to my retirement, then I can start planning for my retirement. No, the planning starts right now. And for you to have that total picture of all the things that you need to do or all that you need to make available during that time of retirement, it is important that you know them 
right now and also to make adjustments. You also have time to make some adjustments where you need to make those adjustments um, even bit before the time of retirement. So I'm going to be inviting my, uh, my colleague um, in the name of um, Chine Ezeigwe, who is our lead financial planning, who is going to be taking us through that journey of how you can start real planning towards your retirement. So Chine, okay. you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Larry. Um, a very warm welcome, uh, dear esteemed partners. Thank you for joining us on this call today. Um, just like Larry has said, um, we are going to be talking about um, planning, how you are going to plan um, for your retirement. Um, we understand that um, a lot of people, um, are, are, once they hear retirement, they actually think that um, is a death sentence. You know, a lot of people are scared. Some people are not yet prepared for retirement. Some will be wondering what I'm going to be like at the point when they are retiring. Uh, but the good thing is you're a member of ARM Pension, you're one of our partners. And ARM um, has come up with a plan for you, you know, step-by-step -step process as to how you can achieve this or life goals from the pool. We understand that the whole lot of you here I want to be entrepreneurs, even at the point of retirement. Some also want to consult. Why, you know, some want to start a second career. All of these life choices are very good. But the good thing, the, the truth is, without adequate planning, without, you know, making adequate preparation for all of these life goals, it is most likely that we are going to struggle. So it's important that, you know, we, we, we plan towards these life goals. Now, a lot of people do think that, um, with the little money that they have, you know, with the salary they collect, they may not be able to actually achieve this, their life goals. We all have different aspirations. We all have different, um, you know, goals in life. But the truth is, with proper planning, you would be able to achieve all of this. There's this popular saying, um, you know, by Anthony Vicente, he said, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So it's very important that you set up a plan how and what you intend to do, what and what do I need to put together in order to achieve these um, life goals of mine? What are those things that I need to do? And with financial planning, you can actually achieve all of these goals. What then is financial planning? So basically, financial planning is just a process, you know, to help you to achieve these your life goals. It's a process, it's, of, it's more like a, it's a comprehensive evaluation of what your current sources of income are. What are those your spending patterns? Where and where do you spend your money on? You know, you, you also need to have like a disciplined money management. Um, what do I mean by this? You need to know where and where you know you 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 spend your money. What exactly? How exactly do you um, how exactly do you make money? What are your sources of income? Is the source of income basically um, you know from your salary, or you have other sources of income? All of these things need to be checked because for you to be able to achieve this your life goal, there's a need for you to do proper planning towards all of this. Now we have identified certain steps, you know, a step-by-step -step process towards you know on how you can actually achieve these goals in, you know, that you want to achieve. Now, the first thing we normally advise our clients to do is this: you need to be able to pick up a pen and paper and write down this your goal that you want to achieve. And these goals have to be very specific. It has to be smart goals, you know, goals that you know that are achievable. So you need to write them down so, so you can visualize them and plan towards them. Once you've been able to write down this your goals, the next thing would then be for you to apportion a time frame to all of these goals that you want to achieve. Goals that you want to achieve within a year, they are sent as short-term goals. You need to identify what those goals are. Then what are, what are those your mid-term goals that you also want to achieve within five years? And what are those ones you want to achieve, you know, after five years? You need to be able to write all of these things down. And then once you have been able to identify the time frame to all of these goals, just like I've mentioned before, some of us want to be entrepreneurs, some of us want to be consultants at the point of your retirement, but some of us want to take up a second career. You need to be able to put this according to the time frame as to when you want to achieve this. Once you have done that, you then begin to prioritize. You know, all of these goals that you have written that you prioritize them according to me. Which ones should come first? Which ones are meant to be active within a year? Those ones should come 
spot, and then the one that I'm going to that space after a year should come later. So all of these things are very important when we're planning. And after we have prioritized all of these goals, it is then time for us to analyze our current financial situation. You know, I had mentioned earlier, why is it important we check our spending patterns, our sources of income, and all of that? You also need to check what your cash flow statement is. A cash flow statement basically just gives you an information of you know all your sources of income and your expenditure, where your money is go, go, go to. How are you able to, 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 you know, to gather money to be able to make up this your plan? Are you just depending solely on your salary or you have other sources of income? What are those your spending patterns? Do you spend anyhow or you spend according to needs, according to priorities? You need to do like a cash flow statement to know where your source of income and what your expenditure is like. And there's also important that you look at what your network is. Network is just simply what are those things that you own and what are those things that you own. You need to be able to take out your liabilities from your assets. You need to come up with what your network is. You do a network analysis. And then budgeting also comes to play. You know, in budgeting, you're able to, you know, look at, it gives you like a clearer picture of those your spending patterns, those your spending habits, places where you spend your money on. Budgeting helps you, you know, to actually take charge of that. So it's important that you do an overall budgeting of your expenses. After you have done all of these things, it is now important that you implement this plan. Now, in implementing the plan, with everything I have said, we all know that at this point in time in our lives, while we're currently working, our employers may be taking care of certain expenses for us, such as you know, a health insurance plan. Our currently as we are working, our employer may have set up like um, a HMO for every one of us. But have you ever thought about it? At the point when I'm retired, you're very sure that your firm will not be able to continue to do this. Yes, in some organizations, they take care of the retirees, but what if you're not privileged to work in those employers? where your employer is not going to take care of you health-wise when you're retired. Have you ever thought about it? That you need to set, you know, like an insurance plan, you know, a health insurance plan that will take care of all of the expenses. We all know that we can't run away from, you know, old age ailments. Everyone knows that. So it's important that you set up all of these plans at the point where you're retired, so that rather than pay out of pocket, you're then able to, you know, take advantage of all of this plan that you have set up for yourself. So you need to take out, take out a protection plan, you know, that will help you to, to navigate, you know, when you're retired. Now, we also normally advise our clients to also set up what we call an emergency fund. Normally, we advise that emergency fund should be at least six, three months of your expenses. That is what is re required to set up an emergency fund. Now, emergency fund is just simply an account or a fund that you set aside, just like the name implies for emergency. In cases of eventuality, you need to be able to, you know, withdraw money from this particular account that you have set up. Ordinarily, I do advise my clients to set up what we call the money market fund because money market fund is just a conservative fund that you can, you know, it has easy entry and easy exit. You know, if you can save your money there just in case you want uh, money for, you know, emergency, you can actually go there to make withdrawal. Now, after you have set up an, an emergency fund, you also need to look at yourself and understand your personality, understand your risk profile. Are you the kind of person who wants to take, you know, high risk? Or the kind of person who is risk averse, you need to understand your risk profile. Understanding your risk profile helps you to know the kind of investment you should go into. It will help you to know if you should go into variable income, you know, instrument or you should go into fixed income instrument when you want to take investment decision. So understanding your risk profile plays a very important, you know, role, you know, in in, in investment planning. Again, we all know that. Yes, as I have said, in the recent times. We can't depend on our children when it comes to retirement. We can't use our children, you know, as a retirement package. So it's important that you work, you know, towards all of these plans that you have. You need to understand how much you may need to be able to carry out all of these your, your goals. For somebody who wants to start up a business, you need to be able to understand how much you may need to be able to set up this business. Do I need to start saving now? What kind of investment do I need to do? What is even the cost analysis? What should I do to ensure that this is my business that I want to start actually, you know, comes into, into, into in, in, you know, I'm able to achieve this particular goal? Do you want to be a consultant? All of those things you want to, you know, achieve. You need to, you know, understand how you want to do them. What and what you need to do now? How do you intend to fund all of this? You need to understand that. Once you have been able to understand all of these things, then you can begin to plan properly. Also, it's important that we have like an estate plan. You know, how do I want my assets to be distributed at the point when I'm no more? 
you know, I'm sure that a lot of us here would not want, you know, our children and beneficiaries to fight over our properties, over our access at the point when we're known. So it's important that you set up a will or a trust, you know, an estate plan that will be to distribute your access at the point when you're no longer there. You know, all of these things are very important in setting up a financial goal. You must take this step by step process, you know, in achieving this. And for a venture, you may think that everything I've said now is a whole lot for you to do. The good thing is that ARM pensions will have dedicated relationship managers, professionals who would help you through this comprehensive retirement plan. They would help you look at all of these things all together and give you a package, an entire recommendation as to what and what you need to do. So should you require this service? Please drop your name, your contact in the chat. We are going to get back to you. Or you can actually reach out to your relationship manager and we're going to get back to you. And one thing I need to also put out there is this. This service is a, is a value added service to all our clients. It is at no cost. So at no point in time will anybody require that we pay any sum or any sum for this particular service. Um, thank you for your time and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ine, for that um, beautiful presentation. Thank you so much. And I believe that um, everyone on this call um, has heeded to that call that you have, you know, um, that have sounded to everyone in the sense that we all need to start planning for retirement right now. So that's a beautiful one. Um, so in case you still have, I'm sure maybe you have questions that's already coming up right now and i can also see that some people have already dropped their questions so please if you have questions questions anything that is a question please send it or post it in the q and a um panel and not the chat area so that we can collate all those questions easily so again please drop your questions in the q and a panel and not the chat area um just to mention that please um, thank you very much. And I, some of you have also asked whether you're going to get um, a copy of this presentation and of that. So yes, after this, uh, as a follow-up, we will also be sending you some materials um, so that you can also reference and um, we can keep this conversation um, ongoing. So thank you again, Chine, for that beautiful presentation. So right now we're going to move, um, step up the gear. And um, now we're going to talk about how you then need to plan in terms of what are the processes involved, what are the specific documentations that you need. And um, in terms of all of that, I would invite my colleague, um, Olushola Dekunde, who is just going to talk us through those processes and the specific documentations that are required in that regard for you to be able to plan, I mean, be prepared for that time of retirement. Um, even though some of these things are not, uh, things that are, are out of place or something you need to um, sweat to sweat, to sweat for, really. But it's good that you also know them ahead and we can start planning with you about um, a good retirement so that everything can be seamless. So without further ado, I will allow um, Shola Adekone to just take out through that process. Shola is um, our regional supervisor in our customer experience unit uh, for our Southern um, business, Shola. Thank you so much, um, Larry. Um, a warm afternoon to our esteemed clients. Thank you once again for being part of this session and taking it out time to join us um, out of your busy schedule. Um, like we've started and um, from the comments I've seen, I can for a fact say that this would be much of a value add to you. I will necessarily not be uh, a, a waste of your time. The conversation will be taken even after this time. And so I will believe that it's important that when you drop questions for us, please don't drop it as an anonymous sender. Let us see who is sending us those questions so that we can be able to attend to you even after now we can take the conversation further. Um, like Larry mentioned, I'll be running us through the process of um, assessing your retirement benefits. And um, I'll just do that briefly. For a number of us, um, when we hear about retirement, it looks like a far cry. For so many, it's something that we've been planning for. And um, someone once said that the time you start planning for retirement is actually the same day you get that job so that you can put things in perspective. Within the pension um, space, um, a lot of people believe that um, once you're doing pension, some of the myths out there is the fact that pension contributions are fund you can never assess. Some will say that for you to get your money, you will need the 
um, birth certificate of the male first male child in your village. You will need your great grandmother hair and maybe the last leg of the first person that ever traveled out of the country in your home. A lot of things have been said out there just to make people feel that they may not be able to assess their retirement benefits. And at the RM pension, will tell you that that's actually not correct because the process are quite seamless and you can enjoy your retirement. And so I will believe that we should have this conversation at this time. Um, what I've been able to do is that we have um, tried to highlight this um, process into five major steps that you can just use your five fingers, just your five fingers, and then you can just mark each of them with your fingers and you will be able to remember them. They are pretty straightforward. So the first thing we say you need to do is house cleaning. What do we mean by house cleaning? Um, a number of us got our employment many, many years ago. Some of us have changed jobs multiple times. Um, I'm sure by the time we look through our records, we will notice that as at the time when we're starting our job, the person who are dedicated as our next of kin has not changed. Some of us use our brother, some of us maybe a friend that we got the job together because we're so close, we use their names. Some of us, the address, the information that we have is what we still have there over um, a period of time. We've not really had time to go back and check. Even what we gave our HRs at that time does not really change. And one of the things that is even coming to limelight now, things around date of birth. Some of us completed our NIN with a different date of birth. When we joined, we had another date of birth. Maybe over a period of time, we got a clear picture around that. Some of those information we need to check to be sure that the information that we have provided are actually pretty accurate and they are still very much relevant to us because these are the things that can actually impact how soon and how well you are able to get your um, benefits, especially when there are documents involved and you need to align. So it's important we do the house cleaning to be sure that all of our informations are up to date and they are accurate. So we say do that house cleaning, check your personal information, check your employment records to be sure that all of this information are, are very much intact. Then step two, we say talk to us. Uh, preferably we'll say that you should talk to us at least six months before retirement. Yeah. Talk to us at least six months before retirement. And this is what we are saying. So for those of us that are in the federal government employment, that most likely were in the um, treasury funded FGN organizations that will require verification and online enrollment. One of the things that we will appreciate is the fact that because you might be required to do verification. So it's important that um, for that process of verification, you are, you are required to do certain things, go to your MDA, get letter of introduction, do some documentation, letter of first appointment. They might ask you for a number of things that you might need to visit the archives to get those informations out. And that's my required time. Some of us might even need to leave our current base and go to maybe the regional or the major headquarters in Abuja, Port Harcourt, wherever it is. And that might take us time to put all of those documents together. So if you talk to us early, based on the peculiarity of where you have worked, we'll be able to advise you on the steps that you need to take and now where you can quickly get this done. For those that are in the state government employment, so there are also clearance that you might require to do with the state government, with the state bureau and all of that. We work with you to ensure that those steps are easy and seamless so that we can advise you on what and what you need to do first, how you need to go about them. They also tell you what is applicable to you and um, based on what you have contributed, where you have worked, based on um, who you are and all of that and what is allowed within the guidelines, which is very important. So the PENCOM has actually put down the guideline for the retirement and terminal benefits that stipulates how pension payments should be done. So these are the things that we we'll work with you through. Then number three, we also say that you should review uh, your documentation and work on a verification process. So when we say review your documentation in terms of some of us join our employer at a particular date, but when pension remittance started coming into our account, it's not the same date. So we might need to reconcile that position. For some of us, probably, in our organization, we have a date for our statutory retirement, but then you will start at a particular period. So those data should be reconciled such that when pension contribution ends in your account, it aligns with when your last day of work. So there are no cases of excess remittance or excess of any form of shortage or things that need to be reconciled along the way. And if there are any other verification you need to do with your employer in terms of them confirming that, okay, you're on a particular grade, this is what should be coming into your account so that you are both on the same page not when payment is meant to be made. We are now talking about those reconciliation. Then number four, we say review your retirement plan. So from the presentation that my colleague made earlier around retirement planning, by the time you want to assess your benefits, a number of things will cross your mind that you also actually want to, you need funds for. 
And most of us, uh, most of what we've seen so far is the fact that a lot of people immediately they retire, they are looking forward to getting big amount of money. And our pension was designed is to cater for after work life to ensure that you are able to get uh, on with life, even when salaries are no longer more coming in. But if you look at your retirement plan and goals again, that will tell you what exactly do you need. Probably you don't even need a lump sum. Probably what you need to get going is your monthly pension going on. Maybe what you do, what you even need at retirement is just to allow your fund grow some more, focus on retirement and don't come and withdraw. We have all of those conversations to align them with your retirement goal. For a number of other states want to retire and become entrepreneurs. So all of that will allow us to have those conversations with you and help you along the way. Then step number five, we say, select your preferred option. At ARM Pensions, we have a wide range of options where you can access your retirement benefits. We have our digital platforms. We have our offices across the 36 states and federal capital territory. We have dedicated relationship managers that are assigned to our clients who can also assist you and walk you through the, uh, the path and advise you on how to go about it so that there are no ASU when you decide to ass um, um, assess your retirement benefits. So with these five tips, please remember house cleaning, talk to us. Minimum of six months, we'll appreciate that validate your information, align your retirement plan, and also have in mind which of those options would be, will I prefer? I don't want to go around, I just want to apply from the comfort of my home. I would like to have somebody come over, let's have a conversation together. Or I would like to take my legs there and confirm for myself from the physical offices. The next thing I'll be speaking to us just as a round off is, what is the process for assessing your retirement benefits? So we've been able to yeah, mark into four different um, steps that you need to take. The first part of it is the documentation. Remember when I mentioned that you need to validate your records, you need to do house cleaning. We will request from you certain requirements based on the um, retirement benefit that you qualify for and tell you to provide those documents. By the time you provide that document for to us based on the guideline, we will review them internally. By law, we are required to actually confirm your pension payment to be sure that they are remitted as a due um, when you join up until when you exited. There are no missing periods. We also confirm your date of birth, date of exit, and mode of exit. Some employers are so creative, and what they do is that they provide this letter to their employee, even while they are going, not just confirmation of retirement or exit. So they give them these requirements. If you have such letters, we will not need to wait for 14 days that you see here. What it means is that even on the day that you retire, you can visit our office and come over, and you can assess your benefits. When you, we can apply for your retirement benefits and we'll commence that process. But in the events where you don't have that, and probably you work in a state government or private sector, who will write to your employer. And by law, if you don't get a response on our first letter, they let the law stipulate that we have to wait for five days before we send them a reminder. After five days, we'll send them a reminder. Upon that reminder that we have issued out, if they don't respond to us, the law also stipulates that we have to wait for seven days. If after seven working days, we don't get their response, then we can go ahead to process with the acknowledgement, which is a proof that we have written them, and the exit letter you have provided, which is why we have put that 14 days mark there. Then after all of this has been done, we review all of the documents you have given us in line with the guidelines to be sure that the documents are accurate, there will be no need for rejection or waste your time within the process when we send to the National Pension Commission. All of that will be done within 48 hours, and thereafter your application is sent to PENCOM for review and onward approval. Um, usually, based on our experience, um, we expect that PENCOM should give us approval um, within five to 10 working days. And once that approval is received, we'll go ahead to process your retirement benefits for payment through the custodian, and this is done within 48 hours. Please note that depending on the um, type of benefit application or retirement benefit that applies to you, we also determine the type of document with which you need to provide. But if you go through the five steps that I've mentioned earlier, you'll find out that you most likely just went about the same time. And within a short time, your retirement benefit is paid to you. Thank you so much for listening. I'll hand over back to Larry as we proceed with the many parts of this presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Allah, for that simple, short, but very insightful presentation. And um, I, I want to believe right now that some of us, we are ready. All the, the mysteries or the myth around um, how to assess your retirement is being demystified right now because we can see that it's just a simple process. You already know the documents or how you can go about the documentation. What are the things you need to do before uh, before this time? And um, we, I'm sure we are picturing how easy this is going to be when that time um, comes. All right. So that is also to set the stage for the next part of the presentation um, right now. And um, just before that, we would just like to also 
uh, ask us another question. And um, this is to ask us another question, which is an, uh, to ask us whether we know uh, the level of awareness of the options that are available during the time of retirement. So if you look to your screen right now, you see a poll showing and asking you what options are available to a retiree at the time of retirement. So I'm sure many of you have heard so many things. Okay, this is what you get, this and uh, so, but specifically in your own view, based on what you have heard or what you have known or what you have read, regardless of the source, what do you think is or are the available options that anyone can get? And if you are not really sure, and that's why we also put another option there to capture whether you are not sure um, before we actually go into that section, because the next section is going to actually delve more into that. But we just wanted to know your level of awareness of this, um, even as we go into that um, part of it. I can see that pretty much many of us know about this based on the answers I've seen so far. Interesting. Many of us seems to be very knowledgeable, and which is good, really, which is very good. Um, I mean, half, half of the job that you want to do today has already been done in the fact that you already have that understanding, or even if it's a little understanding of um, what is available for you as a retiree at the time of retirement. So please, um, that is um, very good. So I'm going to end the poll right now. And um, so that's because of time, we can um, really move on. So thank you for those who have um, imputed or answered the question. Um, let me share the results so that for the benefit of um, every one of us. So those that say is about the, the one time lump sum, about 14%. Um, about 38% said um, um, program withdrawal or annuity, which is correct. Um, but if you have actually picked all of the above, I think you are most correct because you get a lump sum and also program withdrawal and annuity. But I won't preempt all of that. Um, the next section is going to delve more into all these things, but just to say that um, that is what we'll be talking about in the next um, in the next section. And to do justice to that, I'll be inviting my colleague um, in the name of Charles Fakunda. Uh, Charles Fakunda is one of the uh, members of the uh, our benefit administration team. Um, they are the ones in charge of payments. Um, so he's a good candidate to actually take us through this process and so that we can also have this good understanding of what options and what payments you are entitled to at the time of retirement. So I will invite Charles to, um, to, con to take it from here. Thank you so much, Larry. Good afternoon to our esteemed client. And um, it's glad to have you here. Thank you for sparing your time to join us in this session. Um, this is to assure you that this session is going to be a rewarding um, session. And I'll just encourage us to stay tuned and to listen to you know, what's the, what we have to offer. Um, there's this saying by Josie Maswell that life is a matter of choices and every choices we make, make us. And that for that reason, ARM Pensions is intentional about intimating us about you know, our retirement benefit options, what are the retirement benefit options and how can we you know, tap into the options that is available to us. And that's what we're going to be speaking about this session. We're going to look at what are the factors that determine the withdrawal options. We're also going to look at the withdrawal options, as Celia said, and we're also going to look at the documentation involved in assessing your retirement benefit option. Um, before we talk about the retirement options, retirement benefit options, um, we need to understand you know, the workings behind how those options come into play. And that will help us to appreciate and make an informed decision even as we go into retirement or as we prepare for retirement. My colleague has spoke a lot about financial planning, retirement planning. It's important that we intimate ourselves with the withdrawal options so that we can make an informed decision. Um, before we talk about the withdrawal options, we need to understand that the withdrawal options is a function of um, a standard retirement benefit calculator. That standard retirement benefit calculator is what is being used 
to determine our retirement benefit option. So it's not a function of um, the faces of the retiree. You know, there's this myth that, oh, my face is not good enough. That's why I'm being given a certain amount that I'm not um, satisfied with. Some people will feel like, oh, maybe because my name is not sweet enough, that's why I'm not being given my preferred lump sum that I desire to access. But that's not the case here. It's a function of retirement benefit calculation, calculator which was developed by the National Pension Commission as a regulator. And this calculator is a standard calculator that costs across all PFAs in Nigeria. And that calculator determines you know, what we can assess as lump sum and what can be used to continually pay our pension payment at retirement. Now, for us to look at what this calculator entails, we need to understand that the calculator you know, take certain inputs and use that input to determine what the output will be at the end of the day. And what are those inputs? The calculator takes into cognizance your retirement savings account balance. What is your retirement savings account balance? Your retirement savings account balance, you know, speaks to all the contributions that has been remitted into your retirement savings account and the return on investment that has accrued to the fund. All those factors plays out to determine what your balance should be at the point of computing your retirement benefits. And we also need to understand that there is a direct relationship between our retirement savings account balance and our um, the amount we can assess as lump sum payment and pension payment as the case may be. And um, it's important to also bear in mind that the more we plan towards having a robust um, retirement savings account balance, the better or the more impactful it will be at the point of retirement when you want to assess your benefits. So aside that, you also consider your gender, your, both the gender and your age at retirement. That's another factor that determines what you get at retirement. Those two that I just mentioned, the gender and the age at retirement, plays an important role in determining your life expectancy. And that life expectancy simulation, you know, helps in determining how long can we can your pension payment be, be paid? And that life expectancy computation goes a long way in determining the value you can access as lump sum and the value you can access as pension payments. Another thing that is important that you need to look at is your final salary. What are you earning while in employment? Um, based on the regulation for retirement benefits, your pay slip in the last three months of exit. Um, we be used to compute our retirement benefits. So that final salary speaks to what your basic um, salary is, your housing and your transport allowance. Those four, those three allowances combined together to determine what your annual total monument is. And that is the basic housing and transport for a year. That value plays an important role in determining what you'll be able to access when you want to apply for ret your retirement benefits. And it's important to bear in mind that this calculator takes cognizance of pension payments and your lump sum payments. The payments, the, the computation, the essence of the scheme is to ensure that while you are no longer working, there is a platform where you can be receiving a monthly or quarterly pension payment, depending on your preference. And that platform would prioritize payment of pension value above long lump sum value. Now, the lump sum value speaks to a partial withdrawal of your RSA balance based on um, some parameters, which I've just explained earlier. However, for you to get a lump sum value, you need to determine what you will be assessing as pension payments on a monthly basis. So it's not a function of, oh, um, I must get 50%. No, it is not a case of getting 50%. Your pension value is computed in such a way that you should be able to access 50% of your monthly emolument. When I talk about your monthly emolument, I'm talking about your basic, your housing and transport. You should be able to access 50% of those three variables as monthly pension payments. Now, when that has been computed and it has also factored in the estimated period of time your pension payment will be made, it is the residual balance from your retirement savings account balance that will determine what your lump sum will be. 
So your lump sum payment is not an automatic or a fixed figure. It is a function of what you are earning while in employment, what your RSA balance can pay based on your um, the total uh, uh, annual total monument computation. And those plays an important role in determining what your lump sum would be. Another factor that you also need to bear in mind is that um, your, your RSA balance must be sufficient to pay at least um, one third of the minimum, prevailing minimum wage. Currently, the prevailing minimum wage is 30,000. And as time goes on, as it increases, to also impart in what determines the minimum value that you can assess as pension payment. Now, your RSA balance must be sufficient to pay at least one third of the prevailing minimum wage. Currently, it's 30,000. So the one third of your minimum wage will be 10,000 naira. So if your RSA balance is sufficient to pay at least 10,000 on a monthly basis, then that computation will be spread out for an estimated period of years. And it is the residual value that will be paid out as long sum payments. So if the RSA balance is not sufficient to pay 50% um, of your um, monthly emolument as pension payment, that is when the concessional 25% comes to play. So the value you will be assessing as long sum in retirement is a function of you know, the RSA balance. So if the RSA balance is sufficient to pay you know, a huge amount of value as pension payment and goes to play an important way also in what your long sum value would be. So in cases where your RSA balance is not sufficient to pay, um, it's not sufficient to pay 50% of your monthly emoluments as pension payment, that is where the concessional 25% come into play. And that's why you see in some instances, um, based on some people's retirement service account balance, they are not even entitled to access a lump sum value. But because there is a position in the regulation that take it to cognizance a concessional value of 25% of your retirement service account balance, then that is when the 25% payment will come to play. Once that 25% payment has been taken out, the residual 75% of your retirement service account balance is what will be used to continually pay your pension payments. Um, another thing you also need to bear in mind is that your your um for you to determine the number or the amount of value you can access as lump sum, they are in two broad categories. We have the end block payment and we also have the lump sum withdrawal payment. The end block payment speaks to the one-off payment from your retirement service account balance. As Elia said, if your RSA balance is not sufficient to pay um 50% of your monthly emolument and it's not sufficient to also pay one third of the prevailing minimum wage, then the total RSA balance is what will be paid out to the RSA holder as your retirement benefit. However, in scenarios where your retirement service account balance is sufficient to pay at least the prevailing minimum wage, then a portion of it will be paid out as retirement service account balance at once. So rather than accessing the entire retirement service account balance, a portion of it, which could be between 25%, which is a concessional balance, and 50%. So the value is not static. The value is not automatic. The value is not determined by your facial look. It's not determined by, by your record. But what determines it is what you have in your retirement service account balance. And the parameters which I've mentioned earlier, your gender, your age at retirement, your financial salary, they play an important role together with your retirement service account balance. So that's what that partial payment does, the lump sum withdrawal value. Having said that, once um, we are able to establish that your retirement service account balance is sufficient to cater for 50% of your monthly allowance while in active employment, and it's also sufficient to cater for the prevailing minimum wage, then there are two broad categories of option that can be used to assess your monthly pensions or quarterly pensions, depending on your choice that you will be selecting. So we have the program withdrawal and the retiree life annuity. Those are the two pension products 
that is within the confinement of the Pension Reform Act, and it is based on those the pension scheme that has made available that um, the retiree can choose. Now, looking at those two options, the program withdrawal and the retiree life annuity, they are very unique in their package. They are very unique in the way you know payment is being made, and they are also unique in the way uh, it's going to be serviced. Um, looking at program withdrawal, program withdrawal is being managed by the PFA and is also regulated by National Pension Commission. In the case of retiree life annuity, the product is being managed by the um, retiree life um, insurance company, sorry, the life insurance company, and also regulated by National Insurance Commission. Now, secondly, your for program withdrawal, you can have access to your you can have access to monitor your retirement savings account balance. You can monitor the performance. You can see if your, your retirement savings account is making progress or is going down. You can see if there is a need for you to remain on program withdrawal or you want to move to another platform to be assessing your pension payments. In the case of retiree life annuity, um, what the fund that you receive, that is after the long sum has been paid out, the residual balance, which will serve as the premium, will be transferred to your retiree life um, insurance company of your choice. And once that choice has been made and the fund has been transferred, the fund goes into a pool. They call it an annuity pool. And it is from that pool that pension payments will be made into your account. Whatever return on investment that accrues to that pool, we sit with that pool. But well, in the case of program withdrawal, whatever return on investment that has been happened to the fund, you can, you can access it in your retirement service account. You can view it, you can monitor it, and you can see if your fund is doing well or not. Um, in addition to that, for program withdrawal, um, there is opportunity for periodic enhancement of your pension value. So no matter what your pension value is at the, at the point of completing your retirement, there's an opportunity to earn more. There's an opportunity for increased pension value. And that is determined by periodic release by the National Pension Commission. Um, from experience, of, um, based on historical record, um, the enhancement of pension happens once in three years. Uh, we just had the last one, few, which ended a few days ago. And we had over 10,000 retirees qualified for pension enhancement. So what that means is that once you're on program withdrawal, you can have access to periodic pension enhancement. And it's based on um, the fund growth, um, which is 5% on your retirement service account. In the case of annuity, um, periodic enhancement is a function of the insurance company of your choice and the, 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 the category of retiree life annuity package that is being purchased. So for program withdrawal, the pension enhancement is a standard procedure, which is being governed by National Pension Commission. Um, going further, in cases where death set in, um, we are trusting, you know, we are trusting that God protect us, we have long life and sound health. Definitely a time will come where um, we'll move to the world beyond and what happens to our fund thereafter. Um, for program withdrawal, the total balance left in the account plus the return on investment will be paid out to a designated um, beneficiary. When I mean designated, I mean I mean the legal beneficiary. And that legal beneficiary can have access to all the funds in the account. But in the case of annuity, um, it depends on the it depends on the uh, guaranteed period of years for the annuity. Um, the guaranteed period of years for annuity is 10 years. And what that means is that um, even after the 10 years, they will continually pay pensions to the annuitant. However, if that's set in, within the years of guaranteed period, let's say um, out of the 10 years, um, the, the demise happened around seven years. What will be paid to the beneficiary will be the balance of the period that the client, the retiree assets is pension payment, which is three years. And that's how it was going. If the, the, the RSA or the annuitant um, died after the guaranteed period of 10 years, then what the beneficiary will be able to access is nothing. Won't be able to access any fund. 
Um, in addition to that, once you once once a retiree is on program withdrawal, there's an opportunity to monitor your account and see if you are fine on program withdrawal. And you can decide to and that oh, you feel your funds is not doing well, you feel you're not comfortable with the services being rendered. You can move to live annuity and you know switch to live annuity. But if you move to annuity, you can switch back to program withdrawal. You can only move to another RLA provider. Um, after two years with an existing RLA order. Another thing that is important that we need to bear in mind is that um, retirement, there's this myth that once you're on program withdrawal, your fund will get exhausted within 10 years. That case is not true because um, if you look at the way it works, after your lump sum is being paid, the residual balance in your account will be invested into you know portfolios that will yield return on investment into your accounts. And those portfolios are safe and they are being regulated by National Pension Commission. In addition to that, um, you can have access to your retirement service account as earlier said to monitor the performance. And you can also have period, you can have access to quarterly statements or anytime you want to you can have access to it. And um there are many instances where the return on investments on a monthly basis, the, the um, consolidated position of the retirement service account on a monthly basis is sufficient to even pay your pension payment. So what that means is that it seems as if your um, the residual balances after your lump sum has been paid is not touched. So if you are paid, let's say you are paid um, 45%, for example, and you have 55% remaining in your account, the return on investment on that remaining 55% of that basis can be sufficient to even pay your pension payments without touching the remaining 55%. So what that means is that the growth on the fund will be accrued to your fund, and you can also monitor it, and it will help also in future enhancements. So what it means is that if you are assessing a particular value, if you are assessing a particular value, if you're assessing a particular value, what it means is that you, it doesn't mean that it is that value that you assess for life. There's room for growth, there's room for improvements. Another thing you also need to bear in mind is that when, um, even if the fund gets exhausted, there's room, you know, to enhance your pension, there's room to continually assess your pension to the minimum pension guarantee platform, which is a platform where um, you also have the pension protection fund, which is available to continually pay your pension. So what that means is that a program withdrawal, pension payments will continually happen as long as you are alive. In the case of annuity, annuity also um, provide pension payments to debt, and um, as long as you are alive, you continue to receive pension payments. So those are the key highlights of um, program withdrawal and annuity. I believe based on that, you can make an informed decision at retirement of which of the two options you want to go for. Another information I would like to pass across is that aside from retirement, um, um, aside from retiring normally, you know, there are also peculiar instances where um, an RSA order exists based on medical grounds. So there, these are instances where a retiree could not continually work. It's less than 50 years, he cannot continue to work because of health challenges. And that can be uh, verified through a qualified physician through the medical certificate. And that will be the basis for exit from employment. So what it means is that if it is not going to be a case of, oh, I've exited employment and then health challenges now set in, no. It is the health challenges that will precede exiting from employment. That's retirement on medical ground. And when those scenarios happen, if it's if the situation would not would not enable the RSA order to be directly involved in assessing the retirement benefits, a special guardian can be appointed through the court to process on behalf of the incapacitated RSA order. Another thing that is important is that for that special guardian to assess the fund on behalf of the incapacitated RSA order, needs to provide you know, the certified true copy of the appointment letter. That's the appointment letter to be the special guardian on behalf of the RSA order. You also need to provide the means of ID and bank documents, among other you know, regular documents required to assess the retirement benefits. Of, uh, benefits. 
One thing is very important for this category. You, your basis for exit should be based on medical ground, not um, um, not having health challenges after exiting. You know, there are two different things. Let's have that at the back of our mind. Other withdrawal options that we have is the um, AVC option. So at retirement, um, an RSA holder can decide to go on a contract employment. What that means is that on that contract employment, the retiree is no longer mandated to contribute into, into the scheme. And that can be done through voluntary um, contribution into the scheme. That voluntary contribution can only be assessed at the expiration of the contract employment. And the withdrawal, you know, the withdrawal will be based on the exit from that contract employment. And at the same time, too, you can use that contribution to augment your current pension payments. You can also use you can access it as same block, and you can also use it to augment your pension payment. The at the point of withdrawal, if you want to access it as same block, the tax treatment will be based on the principal amount that was remitted to the account and the return on investment that was accrued into the contribution. So those two contributions um, will be taxed, and that tax element speaks to contributions that were remitted um, within the five years of remittance. Any contribution that is remitted after five years will be subject to tax holiday. Uh, in addition to that, there are also instances where after retirement, there were some outstanding contributions that were not remitted by the employee, which was remitted later after retirement. So after assessing your retirement benefits, those contributions will be treated as additional payments. And before that additional payments will play out, the, uh, the, there is a template, there is a benefit calculator that you know computes the additional benefit payment, and what that calculator will do is, is to examine your current pension payment. Is it um, is it up to fifty percent of your retirement of your um, final salary? Once it's up to fifty percent of your final salary, then the the total additional um, contributions will be paid out as additional benefit payment. But if it's not up to that augmentation, will happen first before whatever is left can be paid out as additional benefit payment. Um, lastly, before I go, I would like to intimate us with the documentation processes. As you can see on your screen, there are mandatory documents required, the passport photograph, the bank account details which you are paying your account to, and the valid means of ID, which we um, identify whoever is going to access the withdrawal. Um, for M block for program withdrawal for annuity, these are the required documents um, for us to process our retirement benefit. The retirement letter is there, payment letter, the program withdrawal agreement and annuity agreement. The pay slip is very important, the last three months of payment. And like my colleague have said, for you to get the confirmation letter, you can you know, get your employer ahead of time to um, provide the documents so that it can ensure seamless processing of retirement benefit. For voluntary contribution, we have um, the tax ID, which is applicable in instances where tax will need to be remitted to the tax authority. The exit letter is also important too, because it's an evidence that you've exited employment before you can access um, withdrawal. For debt benefits, when debt set in, um, you have the will document and you also have the letter of administration, which is one of the key documents required um, for assessing debt benefit. And that's why it's important that. Um, we update our records to ensure that whoever would prefer to, you know, enjoy the benefits is updated as our NOK. And at the same time, too, the will will help us to clear any doubt on how um, the benefits will be assessed. And um, in situations where the will is not available, that's when we have the letter of administration, um, which will also help in determining the legal beneficiary among others. Um, um, this is all for now. I will encourage us that um, for us who have not retired, we have enough time to plan ahead. And um, I believe this um, information will help you to make an informed decision at retirement. Thank you. Up to you, Larry. All right. Thank you so much, Charles, for that very important. And I think this is also um, of all that we have spoken today, um, I'm sure this is um, a very important part of it. 
And um, so thank you, Charles, for taking us through that presentation. And um, I mean, this has sparked up many questions, I guess, because we've been getting questions. And for those who have said that uh, maybe their questions have not been answered. So we're going to, we have a Q and A session. So that's why we are waiting to get um, to that section where we we'll take some questions. Even though we are not going to, we, we probably will not, with the questions we have right now, there are so much so that we don't want to keep you continuously on this call. So we'll take some of those questions, but rest assured that if any of your questions have not been answered, we're still going to collate them as part of the email we're going to be sending to you with the slides or the presentation that we have in this, um, in this webinar. We're also going to compile uh, all the questions and provide answers to them and send to you. So please don't be too worried that, okay, maybe we didn't take your question during this presentation. Like I said, we would answer them. The ones we are not able to answer, we would also still answer them and send as part of the follow-up uh, communications that we'll be sending to you after this webinar. So without uh, wasting further time, we'll just um, take very quickly for just about five, 10 minutes, um, the last presentation for today, which is also very critical. We need to also be sure that now that, now that we have retired and we now have access to the money that we have, now it's important that we need to know the kind of lifestyle we need to live and talking about our health pretty much and how we're supposed to live our life at that time of retirement. And I believe uh, not everything is money. Some people have sacrificed their health just for the sake of getting money. And they now get the money, they're unable to spend it on themselves. They are just using it to you know, treat one illness or the other. So we don't want you to, uh, we don't want any one of us to be in that, in that cycle. So what we'll be doing at this time is to invite um, uh, our guests, um, the doctor, from Aksamantad Health um, HMO, and they will be talking to us today to on how we can keep fit at that time of retirement, even from now till that time of retirement and after, and how we can generally live a healthy um, lifestyle. So I'm going to invite Dr. Imok Omokudu to take us through the presentation that um, Aksamantad has for us today. Hello, doctor. So welcome to the um, talk and the presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, our daddies and mummies. Welcome, everyone, to the talk with health and well-being before and after retirement. Obviously, there's a, it lets you know time is one thing that is constantly flowing, and it's a chronological thing. But at the end of the day, um, it's, it's something that, you know, you have to understand that, you know, um, we cannot go back in time. It's always moving us forward ever forward and so the one thing we can do is since we know okay fine no matter what even if we push back or whatever it's always we're always being pushed forward how do we enjoy the experience mm -hmm. one of the greatest um 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 quotes that i got way back from one of my um again like a mentor in the writing um things like i do a lot of writing and it's actually from a fantasy novel um, by brandon sanderson and he says something he said journey before destination is one of the ideals of the radiance if you ever have the chance to read the book it's great it's called the way of kings one of the most amazing books I've ever read in my life. So one of the things is journey before destination. So right now, as we're getting well on with age, let's enjoy the journey. The destination will get there. But if you enjoy the journey, you realize that if you focus even on the experiences, the things you carry along with you as you go along, the end eventually will pay off. Even if it might not be, I, you know, there's one thing, especially when, you're, when we're writing or you know, crafting stories, we always say no surprise for the writer, no surprise for the reader. So you are the writer of your own story. Do you understand? You're the first person, you're the hero, you're the protagonist. So as you're writing your story, create opportunities for yourself to be surprised. And you realize that by the time you're surprised, even when you tell your story later, you be like, you know, people are like, how did you do that? How did you manage? And your story is all the most sweeter for that. So um, we're talking about, Here's the outline, basically just an introduction, to health and well-being for and after retirement, and then um, tips for maintaining the question. So we'll start with, you know, Fred Rogers, who was an author, he was a news anchor, he was uh, a lot of things in his life. He actually did a lot of um, stuff even with kids and so on. And I like this statement. So basically said, often when you think you're at the end of something, you're at the beginning of something else. So when one door closes, automatically one other door opens. The question is, how are we positioned to take advantage of that door before maybe it closes again? 
are we you know in poor position to say okay fine as soon as that door opens piam i don't enter whatever and please you forgive me i throw in a little bit of pigeon my style is a bit more conversational than um you know most so you know at least just to bring it closer to home again we're nigerians we might as well enjoy you know who we are so um to go ahead um, when we think of retirement, as we know it, what are the things we think about? Actually, it's not, it's not part of the poll, but when you think of retirement, what are, I would like to just put in the chat, what do you think of when you think of retirement? What comes to your mind? Ah, retirement. You think it's like it's time for lounging, thinking it's time for chilling. Like what, what comes to your mind? Um, please, you can just put it on the chat. That would be great. I'd love to see what you guys have. To, I mean, you have 250 some people. This is a fantastic audience. And so thank you very much for the privilege of your time because it's, it's really an honor. Let me just go ahead and show you what I have. So when you think of retirement, so first and foremost, those who are just on the brink of retirement, I wish you a happy retirement. It's one of the best times of life. You know, having paid your dues, you know, one of the things about you, most of us young guys now, well, not most of us, but a lot of us young guys, and I, was, I wasn't even so young anyway myself, I'm in my late 30s now. But I mean, you get the idea, like we don't, you guys have paid so much dues, right? It's amazing to see, okay, fine, it's like, finally light at the end of the tunnel you know like ah catharsis you know it's like being constipated for so long and you just have a chance to just blow you're like yes at last we don't reach right that's the kind of thing uh you know it is so when you think of retirement there's so many things i want to mind you think of oh insurance just like you know you've been talking about your pension you're thinking about um playing golf business air travel there's a guy i saw recently i've just saw it on instagram this guy actually in in early 1991 or so there was a, i think it was um then it was um us airlines or so they had a promotion a promo right and that promo was that okay if you pay $250,000 right you can have free flights for the rest of your life on that air, air carrier so the guy i don't know how the guy scrambled the guy sold everything did everything but he sold and he bought two tickets for himself and any partner of his choosing so recently the guy is old now the guy obviously is well made but he has free first class tickets around the world. The guy can travel 100 times. So like now the guy made such a decision way back. And that's one of the things I've noticed even in the talk here is like, okay, the things you do, the seeds you sow, you know, when you're younger are things that, you know, um, um, also yield dividends for you later in future. So the question now is, you know, Africa, we say this proverb, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is now. So even if you think, oh man, I made mistakes. I didn't do whatever, it's too old. I'm too old. You're not too old, though. The person with do KFC, Colonel Sanders, he was in the 60-something. Now, look at KFC is everywhere, right? So there's never anything as too late or too old. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the things I picked up, uh, you know, was like the illiterate of this age. It doesn't mean about your literal chronological age or anything, but the illiterate of this age is not the man who didn't go to school. I'm only in school. How many people, okay, how many professors, they drive Shagari Benz? There's still them plenty now. So the major issue really is what? is how can you reinvent yourself basically it means that the illiterate of this age is the man who is unable to try to learn new things just expose yourself to new things try to learn new things okay um the yoruba program that says you know talking about being you know, they, they give it to somebody what the body what's the person's own prerogative they have to reinvent themselves you know that's be that's basically what it means you have to reinvent yourself so when you think of retirement don't think of it as man, I ah, mean, life on the close. No, you don't think about oh, more. I don't free. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. I can do that child daycare I wanted to do, all that things, you know, I can have that bakery. Like there's so many opportunities, right? So when you think about it, so I want to wish you happy retirement for those who are close to the mark, happy retirement in advance. I'm actually wishing myself because I'm going to retire pretty soon as well. Sounds weird, but so I've given myself a timer. By the time I'm 45 max, I'm done with you know corporate world and done with every single bit of uh, work that's it for me it's all about giving back and living the best life so i'm also gonna i'm so close to retirement myself so just in case you think oh man this guy i'm well, we, we did the same set i just i'm be a small boy for for class but you get the idea so what are the aspects of wellness when you think about the entire spectrum of wellness as a concept right because you want to be well in order to live your life before retirement you want to be well during the transition process of retirement, you want to be well after retirement itself. So we have to look at the aspects of wellness, something to help us think. There are different aspects of our being. You can't say, oh, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just a guy, 
you know, or a lady, and then that's just who I am. You have the mental aspect of your life. You have the, you know, relationship aspect of your life. How do you relate with others? You have the financial aspect of your life, which is what Aaron was telling you in terms of your pensions, in terms of your investments. These are the things. That's another aspect of your life. The occupational aspect, Uncle, you know, people like, you know, your colleagues, big way back in work. Like my parents, my, my dad especially, um, he retired as one of the top people um, in the oil industry back in the day. So, you know, like, I still see him and his friends and they talk about the good old days and, you know, they talk about whatever. And they actually miss, because he was an accountant, he was head of their finance department. And so, so he, he misses the action. I don't know if there's anybody who has retired on the house now. If you ever have that kind of feeling, you just miss the action. And like, oh, no, I just miss that thing. So those may be the people that may have that same kind of restlessness. It's not something that you just acquire. It's something that you, after a while, you're like, man, it's just who I am. I need to get busy. I need to do something. So if that's the kind of thing, man, the entrepreneurial side of things is where you want to, you know, um, talk. So which is a great one too. Again, in old age, one of the things that we've also noticed is a popular saying, but I, I find it to be somewhat true. The, the, the less active you are as you retire, it kind of opens you up to sedentary lifestyle. It opens you up to lots of diseases. So you want to stay as active as you can. Now, you don't have to be active in terms of business or whatever. You can be active in the gym. You can be active in other aspects of life, mountain climbing, any of that sort of events. I would say bedroom, but the bedroom own comes with complications because I mean, that's where some people are like, oh, more, I've denied myself, you know, uh, God forbid, maybe the person lost his wife and he's like, okay, this is time for me to go hard. All this, you know, it's a weird thing, eh? but you know, older. When you be when like, but you get the idea, that sort of thing. So, in, in terms of environmental, cultural um, aspects of things, these are sort of things that also come to play, you know, as you get older. And then the things you also help with your aspects of wellness as well. How does your environment help you? Does it em, 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 help with your mindset? Does it help your tranquility? Does it help with you? sleeping cultural aspects of things you know what are the things that young people are espousing these days can i live up to that is this something that i still think that my values are being are you not being violated all those aspects are things we must consider as we are embarking on the journey of retirement so before retirement well as you can see the chat we're talking about the old life now we're just at that point of retirement by the precipice right so we're just reminiscing one of the old things one of the things that you know happened way back then Here's the thing, before retirement, hard work, we have to make sure we work hard. You know, obviously, like you see that woman now pounding or whatever, that's maybe Iyalamala of way back, you know, and there's nothing, you know, and I, I, I was careful enough to just bring all walks of life. You see the other lady with the corporate, um, you know, space, you know, the other guy chasing money up and down the place, business, globe trotting. You see the other ones, they're trying to do a standoff in the corporate. So, you know, corporate treachery now, when there's always one guy in the office, you know, everybody has, you know, like I say, everybody has a story. And you always, we are also the heroes of our story. So as we have heroes, we also have villains. Is, you know, body, was body the bad guy in my story? Was he my boss? Was he was the bad guy in my story. Who was the villain? Who was the Voldemort? Who was the, uh, you know, Sauron? Who was the, do you know what I'm Who was, so you have those things. And at the end of the day, one of the things that I always tell people as they retire to also do is to chronicle their stories, chronicle their histories. It's amazing because you have, you have a unique experience, lived experience, a unique story to tell. So before retirement, you can always start thinking about, okay, fine, what are the things I've done? You know, like my, my mother-in-law now, she's a Yalamala. So that's why I put it, I had to honor her in her Amala, the greatest in the world. I mean, I'm talking about, she's in Ogba, by the way, she has a nice story. there. Um, I must sit on the floor. Anytime I'm going to eat Amala, that's it. So like before, but obviously as she's getting older now, obviously she can't be doing all the, you know, turning on the Amala again, all those things and all, but you get the idea, right? So before retirement, what are the things we must consider? We must consider the physical aspect of our lives. We must consider the mental aspect. We consider all these things. But before then, we're all in the, you know, hustle and bustle of life, going up and down place, doing every single thing. We're all there. So now what do we do? We try to collate, we try to, you know, um, document. One of the most crucial things we must always do in life is to document. It's hard, sometimes annoying. Mm -hmm. uh, you do it, you kids are like, oh, I have too many things to do, but you must always try to create time. You see, the thing about this thing is if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You want to be deliberate about it. Now, that doesn't mean that because you haven't done it all your life, you're finished. No. 
today. The best time to plant a tree, remember, is 20 years ago. The next best time now. So what can we do? Just get a small gun, buy one nice exercise book. Let's start documenting stuff. Okay, I mean, I said I don't go buy like how many lands for that village. I didn't even know where my own lands are because I was afraid of traveling to the village and somebody helped me to go and do the survey. Where is that land? God says, you know, you have one funny straight land. Do it, write it down. All those things that you think you may forget, write it down. These are some of the things that you want to have in place right before you retire, like, especially when you're earning a, you know, an obvious income. So during the process of retirement, right, there's going to be a transition. We now, we have to have the right mindset. Some of us, retire willingly some of us even though we are really good in the job sometimes we are forced out and retired we are retired when we didn't retire willingly we, we are retired right so there are so many things that come in, in the corporate space it's a, it's a it's a spectrum how does that affect your mind how does that affect your, your your emotions how does that affect everything these are things to guide so even when you are going through those things you know in the retirement journey the retirement space how do you balance it out right enjoy the process you're only going to retire once that's what i always tell people you're only going to retire just once so feel free because sometimes it may be you know um it may not be fun at first you know like okay maybe for example they kicked you out of the office you know like they just wanted to retire because maybe you couldn't pay your salary anymore you've written risen to the highest echelon or whatever and you were in, in like 10 m and like oh my, ah, this guy's salary 10 m you know how many people feed pay I bet maybe yeah, I go sit down, Jerry. So, so now I'm not saying that's what happens to, but it happens in the corporate space. I've seen so many of my um, patients with that, so I know. So when those kind of things happen, it's natural. You feel bad. You feel like ah, after giving in 30 years of my life, after whatever. But remember what the first guy said, Safred. Ceci, just whenever you think there's one door closing, just know there's another door open. The question is, you have to have the right mindset to put yourself in poor position, take advantage. So enjoy the process. Ah, okay, this guy, do me wrong. I'll write about her in my story. No worries, it's my story anyway. No worries, this guy, he had a chance or she had a chance to write her name in gold, but she chose not to. Hey, you know, doesn't mean you should have revenge in mind, though. but you know, you have all sorts of ways to color your story in a nice way. Just make sure you try to do right by yourself and by those you love during the process of transition. Take your time, okay? Don't be wary, exercise, take things off your mind. But when you now transition outside the workplace, what are the things you now do? Well, let's talk about it. One, you have to get active. Now, I there's no two ways around this. You know, typical Nigeria, ah, man, you know, Nigeria, we have this thing, like, once you're like 60, 60, ah, I don't, oh, I'm an old man, man, Baba, look, you're young. It's, you, are, you are how you feel you are, especially if, you know, because the best, one of the best times to have muscle mass is at your age. Uh, you, you have to lift heavy stuff as best you can. Do lots of weight. I've seen some ladies, there's a, there's a lady, she started training, she's about 80 something now, and she looks so young, but she started training when she was 62. She started lifting weights actively at 62. So there's no thing about, oh, you know, Nigerian women, African women, you know how it is now. Once we give, no, Baba, see, my mommy, you're giving birth. Yes, we agree. You are the hero of ages, seven children, fine. But I don't know me saying, make you no know, carry something. Carry something. Walk jog you know even if it's not about um, whatever do some cardio like dance pace yourself you don't have to do the whole leg walk that you can some assault and whatever but small Just leg walk with feet, like, like you won't kick person so something small something like that get yourself active it does a long way in you know helping and maintain your longevity i mean the statistics also tell us now like in nigeria age of survival for the typical nigerian man is 53 53 then you know the Nigerian women used to be like 60 something, 65, now it's down to 54. So it's just about one or two years difference. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not the way it should be, right? So let's not copy the daddies and the guys because they don't like they live their lives, you know, YOLO, uh, you only live one, something must kill a man. Hey, the one diamond and die, but you mommies, you can do better, right? Exercise, eat healthier, don't drink beer like them. Don't let them get convinced you can be drinking beer. Right, you know, so let's do something a bit different. Let's get active. Let's, you know, can we cook more? Can we go out more? Can we climb? You know, um, you know, do some hiking. You know, Nigeria may not be the safest place, but walk within your estate. You find something that one of the things too, if when you get and take care of your physical health, it helps with your mind. It helps your. It helps with everything else. If you can control yourself, a man who is a popular saying, a man who cannot obey himself, right, will obey everybody else. 
So you have to also know how to control yourself. How do you how do you reprogram your mind? You bring your body under subjection. You bring your physical responses. You bring your your inclination under subjection to you. So the question is, what are you thinking? How are you thinking? Which goes to the aspect, second aspect of what we're talking about, your mental side of things. The mental side of your mind is basically what you are thinking, not how, but what. What are you thinking? What are your relationships like? Okay. If you had an, a beef with your child, maybe you guys had an, an argument. Are you the kind of person that doesn't forgive? You know, statistics have shown that people who forgive more, right? If they even have things like cancer, they respond way better to treatment because they're forgiving. Those who don't forgive, you know, with cancer, they even have like worst case and they, they don't even go to remission. It's improving, like it's correlation. It's not a causation thing, but super, you know, close. So what are your relationships like? Who is that person that you didn't tell? You know, in Nigeria, Africa, we have this thing, like sometimes, okay, I'm going to retire now. If I tell them now in the village, they will now go and get me because they know that I'm not getting money. You know, in Nigeria, we have to close everything, choke everything up, you know, you understand? So live your life freely. You've lived, you survived the trenches till this time, right? Just forge relationships and nurture them, you know, let them grow the best that you can. Um, you, because of time, I have to try and rush because of uh, time. So basically, you get the idea. Um, finances as well in terms of your finances okay how do you do these things like how do you plan you have to plan ahead of time this is where ARM comes in you understand they are amazing I'm telling you that look they will help you plan your finances so you don't because in old age there's nothing worse than not having I, I mean you see the last quote I gave at the end of the day not having enough finances for your health that's why you also have AXA here you also have health for your health care your HMO as well so we also have those things unfortunately we're also partners in a lot of things so you understand that End to end, we're trying to cover you to ensure that you we ease your passage. We enjoy ensure that you enjoy your transition into retirement. You enjoy retirement. You don't endure it. Okay, so that's another thing with that. Look at occupational stuff. You know, you can start like Conor Sanders. This guy, this baba is big. Is everything? But guess what? He's making money. I think one of the sweetest things is also making money in old age and then not necessarily regretting. So what are you thinking? Don't live a life of regret. It has happened. It has happened. What can we do in the future? How can we go ahead in the future? And then let your environment speak for you because your environment tells you a lot of things. If you go to a place, even call, it's as the minutiae, you realize that even small things like color can trigger you. So what's the color of your room? I personally, I'm attracted to white spaces, right? So in my house, you come to my house, everything's white, right? White, everything, the walls white. Oh, you have children, whatever. If they right, we'll paint it back white. It helps my mind with clarity, gives me a sense of space, gives me a sense of, do you understand? So that is how I want my environment to be. And eventually that kind of helps my mood. It helps with what I think. It helps with you know, tranquility. And by the time you, you turn on the lights or whatever, it will also send some ambience and colors and everything. So when you're in retirement, what, what, what kind of, so I want to ask, I want to do a, a small um, thing. Close your eyes. Where do you see your retirement taking place? Do you see yourself on a beach, you know? in you know beach in Maldives or do you see yourself in a beach in you know in Havana like where like how do you see yourself do you see yourself you know on a horse do you see yourself in a limo in a jaguar you know on a spit like I have a friend of mine she just traveled um recently she's in Spain right now she traveled to UK she's not in Spain guess what she's doing she actually was gonna try you know that's that thing that people use when they fly like human flight you, you want fly and everything she's doing that now it's amazing because she drives bikes so, you know, she's doing that now and she's having the best time of her life. We only have one life to live. That is our mom is one life. So let's not say, oh, can you go? Now, what if you know they, but this is where ARM comes in. You need to sit down with them and let them help you plan. Even if you do plan a five-year ahead kind of vacation, you go on a boat cruise. They're not too expensive anymore. Nice boat cruise. Chop, I, like my dad, when my dad had, you know, he had COVID in 20, 2021, he almost died. This is a man that denied himself for almost 70 years. The day Baba, like the day my dad came out of this thing, the next week, cold stone. Yeah, I said, the ice cream where I no chop for this, like I go chop on the kid, the kid, the kid, make a die. But that ice cream, all those things, you know what That doesn't mean you should make poor choices, but allow yourself to live. Don't just exist, okay? Allow yourself to live. And also in doing so, do it smartly, which is why you're here. So psychological aspect of things, what is culture? explore the world so many diverse like for me one of the things I'm, I'm traveling around the world because i want to eat every kind of food the only thing i'm not going to eat in my life is human being or more if not if not if not 
Oh, say, Dr. Ede, it's COVID. I'm not even a rat. I need so long as no human being. Why? I only have one life to live. I'm going to try it out. Let me just try. I feel no like I'm. Well, at least make it. Just live life. Go around the world. See perspectives. Where are these? Where? How do they see the world? You know, in your old, you may not have done it when you're young. Maybe during your time in the corporate space, maybe they carried you abroad and whatever. But you came back. But what's the culture? You know, culture is basically the stories that the people tell themselves. So what are the stories we're telling ourselves? What are the stories we're telling our children? What are the stories that? So let's go around. My parents went to China um, some years back and they had a blast. My mom was on an elephant. It was a crazy experience for them. I haven't been to China. I want to go, right? But I'm thinking maybe sometime, you know, um, next year, upper year, I'm going to take my wife and kids to China. I'll do like two questions from those who have raised their hands and also go to the um, Q&A for in numerous questions, we probably, in fact, not probably, we certainly cannot answer all of those questions because they're just a lot. So, but we'll take some, answer them um, just for general knowledge and um, we'll compile all of that at the end of the session, like I mentioned earlier, and send to our emails as part of the follow-up that, uh, follow-up communications that I'll be sending to you. So without waiting for that time, um, so let me quickly call on um, Bami Dele or nobody to speak and ask your question. Um, Bamidele or nobody, if you're able to speak now, you have the ability to unmute yourself and speak now. Okay, if it's not available yet, um, Abiodun Adeniro. Is Abiyo Dandino able to speak? Okay, all right. I, I'll just go straight to the Q and A, um, not to waste much time again. Um, so, I'm Shola. I think this is for you, either Shola or Charles. So, there's a question here that says that how long does it take for Pencom to process a 25% benefit drawout for the residential mortgage? It is important the timeline is known and followed to avoid um, developers changing their offer price if delay goes above the offer period, thereby upsetting the financial plan. Um, um, or Charles, can, are you able to um, just respond to that? Um, I think we... Yes, Charles, go on. Okay, thank you, Lam. So currently, there's no specific timeline um, for processing a RSA mortgage. Um, approvals come after the commission has done their reviews, and they are sure that you know they can give approval to make payments. So currently, there's no designated timeline. All right. Um, okay. But maybe well, as time yeah, goes on, as the scheme goes on. You know, the time will be reduced, but that's what we have at the moment. Hello. All right. Thank you, Charles. Okay, Hello. So, yes, Val Fash, you can go ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity and well done for the presentation. I just want to quickly say two things. First is, um, please, when you're doing a seven that like this again, if you can make it longer so that, you know, it's not rushed because, you know, you know, um, would want to know more, especially to do examples of, you know, figures, because sometimes we see our statements, you know, there's this figure. So we really want to know the practical you know, way of how these things are calculated, as well as the investments and ROI and all and such, you know, but I'd, I'd say it was a very good presentation. And secondly, this is just my candid feedback. Um, if you see the comments, a lot of people are commenting about the turnaround time. I had that issue. I'm 51. I was supposed to have gotten my um um everything in uh, when I was 50 you know but you know after asking for the documentation and so on and so forth um the the turnaround time was very very poor but that's not to say they were not rude they, they did everything apparently it's supposed to go to pencom at last and that took a long time so if you can work on the turnaround time because I felt that look it was so easy for my money to go in why is it always so difficult to come out 
So that's just those two things. But I'd like to say that I, I really commend you for actually, you know, having this kind of forum where, you know, things are more clear because visibility collaboration is key with transparency, especially when it has to do with money. Thank you very much for the opportunity again. Bye. All right. Thank you very much. So uh, we thank you so much for that feedback and um, all the comments and the feedback they are duly noted. Um, so again, on the timing, we'll, we'll work on that. We just want to ensure that um, everybody as well as yourselves, you can, um, um, aside from attending this session, um, we know that some people are very busy professionals and all of that, but um, I think this is noted. We'll probably just extend the timeline uh, for subsequent sessions that we're going to be having just to update. Hello. Just Hello. All right, so Mr. Ernest, you can go on now. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, this uh, webinar. But one of the things uh, that shocks a lot of persons when after retirement is that what the fund they're expecting, it comes out most times lower, much, much lower than what uh, they're expecting. Now, with this uh, standard retirement benefit calculator that takes into consideration so many parameters to arrive at what you get, is it possible to be more detailed so that um, to a reasonable extent, the retiree can have a clear idea of what he's going to get? Because if you work with the federal government, uh, before now, before this pension scheme, you know you'll be able to calculate to a very large extent and know what you get. Is it possible to do that, give more details so that somebody can have a fair idea of what he or she is going to get? Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Charles, do you want to comment on that? Hello, Charles. Okay, Ayo, please go ahead. All right, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ennis, for that um, um, question. But um, one of the essence is to keep the conversation on the table. And then um, the expectation would be that uh, retirees in this scheme are actually able to define how they want uh, their earnings or their pension at retirement to be. Now, uh, what that means is that um, the way the template, the computation template is designed really, is to ensure that everybody making contribution into this scheme, you should at least earn 50% of what your housing, basic and transport allowances, which forms the basis of your remittances, you should be able to hand it at the point of retirement. Now, where you think this will not sufficiently fund the kind of lifestyle you want at retirement, you can actually subscribe to some other ways of um, increasing your contributions towards retirement. That's why we have the voluntary contribution option. But um, like you said, um, we'll try and make it a lot more transparent. But um, bottom line, the computation template as shared by the commission would like we, like the presenter Charles made reference to, would actually first of all determine these pension values, run it in such a way that, okay, this person can take 50% of what is um, housing basic and transport allowances sums up to before giving them the, um, the lump sum value. Whilst there's a default 25% of what your RSA comes up to at the point of retirement, the total savings you have to retirement, there's a default 25% concessionary that is accessible to every retiree. Um, you can, by virtue of what you put in, what you have saved, you can actually increase that to a maximum of 50%. But, and then your pension, what you now start getting on a monthly basis is further enhanced because you've also increased your savings beyond what is expected. But um, in subsequent um, uh, presentation, we'll see how well we can make this whole group. But bottom line, this is just to start that conversation and then you are a lot closer to us. We would expose you to some other templates that would even, start projecting what you can earn 
with the current uh, account balance you have with us, if you were to retire today, and then we'll also help you um, by some form of advice of how much you can start contributing in addition to what is coming from your employer and your salary to give you the kind of lifestyle you want at retirement. I hope that helps the, Mr. Asenua's um, question. Thank you, Larry. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ayo, for providing that um, feedback. So I'll just take two more questions um, because of time. I'll go to the question um, to the Q and A um, area now, where so many questions have been dropped earlier. Um, please, um, so I think this is for, or let me just take this uh, question that says, what is the difference between the net contributions and the Net contribution to date figure and closing balance. Mm -hmm. And I think this is for everyone, maybe just to provide some um, explanation to that. So your net contribution is all that you have contributed from inception to date. That is everything you have contributed, your employer and employee contributions, net any applicable fee, the admin fee that is taken um, based on your monthly remittance. So that is your net contribution. And your closing balance is how much that amount has now generated over time, including interest. So your closing balance will be your net contributions plus interest or gains or whatever you call it, um, um, income. So all of that added together with your um, contribution will give you your closing balance. So that's why you see that your closing balance will definitely always be higher than what you have contributed because there has been interest or income that has been added to it. So that's why your closing balance is usually much more than your actual contribution. I hope that is um, clear. So I'll take another question here, which says, um, hey, sorry, let me see. There's just a lot. So I'm trying to see which one can be applicable to everyone. Um, okay, so somebody says, I will turn 50 in the next two years. As I was told, I will have access to lump sum when I turn 50. How true is this? Charles, are you able to take that? He said, I will turn 50 in the next two years and I was told that I will have access to lump sum when I turn 50. How true is this? For you to access at age 50, you have to be out of employment. Um, that's the first thing. If you are 50 years of age and you are still in employment, uh, you are not qualified to access um, any withdrawal from the retirement service account. How about me? Okay, so if you have visited employment and you are at age 50, yes, you can access a lump sum value. And then whatever percentage you can access as lump sum, is a function of um, those parameters that would, will be run on the retirement benefit calculator. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Charles. And I hope that provides an answer to that. Um, I'll take one last question from those who are raising hands. Temitope Phillips, are you able to speak? You've been given permission to speak now. Temitope Phillips. Okay, uh, I guess it's not available now. What about V E Ola Oni? Oni? Thank you. Good afternoon. All right. Good afternoon. Good, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Okay. Thank you for this uh, webinar. Um, my. We can't hear you again. The question has to do with um, delayed pension. Um, I have an elder sibling, six months. I'm sorry, uh, V, or Emi Oni, we can't hear you again. You are muted at the moment. Can you, can you hear me? Can you yes, me? we can hear you now. We can make it very quick so that we can. 
round up. Hey, I, th I think there's a problem with your mic. Uh, we really can't hear you now. So maybe, I, I guess, um, I think... No, the, the network, I think the network is also not so good. Um, all right, so let's take Tommy um, Tokwe, if Tommy Tokwe is able to speak. I said, okay, I said thank you for, for uh, um, the um sorry all i mean you, i think your network is not so great so the we really can't hear what you're saying so if you don't mind you can just put it in the chat so that we can pick it from there all right Amit, okay, let's take you as a last question for today yeah good afternoon everybody i afternoon. we appreciate uh, this uh, web now and i give all a lot of information but there's a popular thing we used to hear from people that no matter what parameter, no matter what is it, that they are only giving you 25% of your total contribution after retirement. How true is this, sir? Please. Okay. All right. Um, very, very good question, sir. Um, Charles, do you want to explain this 25% uh, myth? Okay, um, thank you, sir. Um, the 25% lump sum is not a static um, position. Um, like I explained earlier, it's a function of your retirement savings account balance. The more your retirement savings account balance, the more likely your lump sum and your pension payment would be. And um, you also need to consider your age at retirement, your gender, and your financial salary. Those four variables plays an important role in determining what your lump sum payment will be. And like my colleague has said, Ayo, um, the pension value has to be determined before the lump sum payments will be determined. In scenarios where your retirement savings account balance is not sufficient to pay your monthly pension payment, that is when the one third, so that is where your lump sum payment will have a concessional value of 25%. So that 25% is not static. It's only instances where your retirement savings account balance is not sufficient to pay um, your one third, of, sorry, the 50% of your monthly emolument value. That is when that 25% come to play. And that's why we encourage our um, esteemed clients to key into voluntary contribution. Voluntary contribution, you know, is a platform through which you can augment your mandatory contribution so that you can have a robust retirement service account balance and you'll be able to access as much as possible as lots sum payments. I hope I've been able to do justice to your question, sir. All right, yes, I believe so. Um, so thank you so much, Charles. And um, because of time, and I think one we need to take away from this is what I think um, um, somebody had mentioned earlier regarding uh, uh, the time in which we said we would um, work on. I can still see many answer and um, so many questions that have not yet um, been answered. But like we have mentioned and promised, all these questions are still going to be compiled. The ones that are general will be sent. Some of you have also sent some personal questions that are relating to your personal account. So we're definitely going to, we have taken note of those people and we're going to be getting back to you. Um, but for those, um, for the all the, gen, all the other general questions, we're going to be compiling and sending to you as part of the follow-up to this conversation, as I've mentioned. Now, there are other ways you can also um, contact us, which are uh, also, what we want to also um, let you know, you can visit us at any of our branches, you can use any of our digital platforms that are currently showing on your screen um, right now. But as we uh, round up this conversation, um, we just like to take uh, the closing remarks um, and this will be done by, you heard his voice earlier, but he will just come on now to then give us the closing remarks to um, this, um, to this webinar. 
and that will be taken by Ayo, Ayo, Ayo Deji, Ayo Majaro, who is the head of benefits um, administration in ARN pensions. So it will give us a closing remarks um, as we round off from this conversation. Thank you, Ayo. Thank you, Larry. Uh, uh, no doubt it's been a very interesting engagement. And um, as we have um, said earlier, the conversation is just starting. And then uh, we actually, the intent is to start having these conversations earlier. Um, you agree with me that um, the Pension Reform Act is just about 19 years old. And then um, a lot of things are evolving. Um, over the past 19 years. And um, this has not been something that is actually very open to um, retirees before now, but now things are becoming a lot more transparent. Um, once again, I want to appreciate this audience. You've all been very fantastic. Um, it's, it's really been an engaging um, time um, from the what is required in terms of uh, how do you start uh, the steps you need to take towards um, that very financial freedom that we all desire to have um, in order to have our desired lifestyle um, what you need to put in place um, in terms of how do you plan um, place priorities on things you need to do as presented by uh, my colleague um, Chinaye and then um, Shola was also able to let us know those five um, steps using our um, fingertips as to what we need to do as to get ourselves ready for our retirement. Uh, most importantly, I think uh, you need to stay in touch with us. Um, there are all the social media, our um, engagement um, channels we have, we are on social media. Our numbers would also be displayed so that um, this would, um, facilitates you, the ability for you to reach us um, seamlessly. And then um, Charles has actually highlighted what it takes or what happens when you finally retire and we need to uh, put together um, your uh, benefits, um, available benefits options and what you start earning at retirement. Um, and then the doctor, Dr. Mokudu, um, has actually been fantastic in telling us that yes, even at retirement, we can still live that life that we want to live. Um, the situation continues. We want to specially thank you for making all that time um, to be with us this afternoon. Uh, well, it's afternoon in Nigeria. I want to believe uh, it's a global village now. We might have some people joining us from other parts of the world. So, but um, let's keep the conversation going. We are here to ensure that um, that your desired retirement lifestyle would definitely happen with you walking down that road with you. Thank you one, once again um, from all of us at ARM. We appreciate um, you taking out the time to join us for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and like we have said, we actually had some people who actually joined from outside Nigeria. So you are spot on uh, saying that this is a global village. Some people might be joining from other places. So thank you once again. We'd like to thank everyone. I thank all the all the facilitators for today, including our guests. Um, that's Dr. Omokudu from Aksa Mansat. Thank you so much for sharing your time. We really loved um, your presentation and um, to the rest of my colleagues for the insightful information that we have shared today. And my appreciation goes to every one of our attendees today, all the intended retirees, our clients. Please, we want to appreciate you for the time. Um, we took longer than we expected, and we also extended that because, you know, we didn't want to cut short what we are sharing here. So like we have said, the conversation is going to start. So some of you have asked for the recording. Some of you have asked for the slide. So we're going to be sending that again, um, just to reiterate that that will be shared with us via the email. So just ensure that the emails you have used to register is the correct one. So definitely we'll be getting back to you uh, with all of that in um, some few days from now. So um, having said that, um, I say once again, I, I once again, thank you for your time to join us today. I believe that's been a very exciting and a very valuable session for you. Um, and if that's the case, um, we'll see you during the time of retirement and we wish you a happy one indeed. Thank you very much.